Um, let's bring in Pat McFadden, Shadow Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster and National Campaign Coordinator for uh, the Labour Party for whenever the election comes. Let's go to the other end of the spectrum, which we were talking about earlier, in the menopause. It's, um, it's in a lot of the papers today. What's your policy? I think it's really important that employers take this seriously. Um, we support uh, the idea that, you know, if working conditions need to be changed, if things need to be adapted for women going through this, that employers uh, do that. I think it's really welcome that in the last couple of years uh, this issue has been taken much more seriously. I think it's better understood. I pay tribute to the campaigners uh, who've done that. Uh, and I think employers should take it seriously too, and we want that to happen. And the women who have campaigned as they go through it. That's right, that's right. Um, talk to me about the, the Speaker. What a pickle he got himself in yesterday. I feel really bad for the Speaker because I think he acted in good faith yesterday. Um, there were three propositions put forward on this issue of Israel and Gaza. One from the SNP, one from the Labour Party, and one from the Conservative Party. And he decided, because of the importance of the issue, to put all three before the House of Commons. And he did that in good faith, and he won't have expected, when he did that, to have seen the scenes that we saw in Parliament. What well, sort of a ma manipulation was afoot, though? There's no manipulation. The Speaker takes his own decisions. Did Every... Sakir go and see him? Yes, Sakir saw him, and uh, the Chief in Whip his, saw him. In, uh, in the Speaker's house? I'm not sure where, but uh, I believe they met. Um, was that I... appropriate? Yeah, people make representations all the time on their business. The Speaker regularly meets the Prime Minister. Uh, the Chief Whips from all the parties uh, meet the Speaker. He took his decision in good faith yesterday uh, because there's strong feelings about this issue in the country. Uh, and it's not, that's not surprising. We've been seeing what's been happening over the past few months. But the thing that really uh, upset his plan to have three votes last night was the extraordinary decision from the government to not turn up, to pull out of the debate with an hour to go, despite telling them earlier that they would put their proposition to the vote. Now, this matters, because once the government uh, had withdrawn from the, de the debate, presumably because they didn't have the votes on their own side, that meant the SNP resolution uh, wasn't going to be uh, debated either. So their decision upset the plan that the Speaker took in good faith. And I think he's taken the blame unfairly for the Tories' decision not to turn up and to walk away from the debate. But what also matters is whether or not Sir Keir Starmer uh, put pressure on the Speaker to take your amendment to the extent where it has been suggested in quite a lot of the papers this morning that it was mentioned to him that if he didn't, he would struggle to have the support of the Labour Party after the next election. This is not true. Uh, not only is it not true yesterday, but I think that the, How do you know it's not true? there's a resolution because before doing these kind of interviews, I make sure I ask about what's in the papers. So you, Sir Keir Starmer has uh, said to is, you, is, I didn't do it that. It is not true that uh, there was any threat, implied or otherwise, to the Speaker's position. I've been assured of that. that didn't I wonder where that place. came from, then. Uh, well, I don't know where it's come from, but not only that, I think there was a resolution put down last night uh, in the heat of all this about uh, having no confidence in the Speaker. I hope people don't pursue that, uh, because there's no reason why his position should be under threat. He acted in good faith yesterday, and he had every right to expect that there would be three votes, and the only reason there wasn't three votes last night was because the Tory party didn't have the numbers on their own side and that completely upended the plan that he had put forward. In all seriousness, do you think he can survive this? Well, I hope he can, because I, I don't That's see... That's different to whether you think he can. Well, I think, I, you know, there's no reason why his position should be under threat, so... Well, we know why don't we say, we know I think is. and I hope he can? Yeah, we know that his position is under threat. Maria Caulfield sat there for the government in the last hour. She said she wanted him to be Speaker, she voted for him to be Speaker, and now she's finding it difficult to support him. Well, I think that's a great shame, because it's not his fault that... Uh, and I like Maria, uh, you know, we've worked with her over the years, I don't mean this, uh, anything about her, but it's not his fault that Maria's party puts forward a proposition and then an hour before the vote says we're not going to vote on it, even though we're the government, even though we've got a majority. And the Speaker is taking the rap for that and he shouldn't have to. While you lot were bickering over votes yesterday, are you aware of what happened in Gaza yesterday? Well, uh, we're watching it all the time.
What's your understanding of what happened yesterday? Well, the report I saw uh, in Gaza yesterday was about two hostages who were rescued, but at great cost to civilian life. And that's why we've been putting a spotlight on this issue of Rafa and the situation where you've got over a million people sheltering there with nowhere to go and the threat of a major military operation about to take place. About 67 Palestinians, according to reports, were killed overnight. New fighting, um, a deepening breakdown in public order, UN trying to get in a convoy of food aid. It was attacked. Look, the situation is terrible. It's got to stop, but more than stopping, we have to have a plan to make sure this doesn't happen again. Now, the reason we put forward uh, quite a comprehensive proposition yesterday, and we should remember it was the only thing that was actually passed last night in Parliament, was the Labour proposition. And at the heart of it was the idea not only to say stop, but to try to create a better future here to make sure that what happened on October the 7th doesn't happen again and that Israelis and Palestinians can have some security for the future. And if we were in government, that's the kind of approach that we'd have to take. It's a sideshow, though, isn't it, here? I mean, Netanyahu's not going to take any notice well, of think... what you're saying here. And in the meantime, the bickering that went on is being reported in the Israeli press. Look, I think you're realistic to point out the real-world impact of an opposition day motion in Parliament on the situation on the ground in the Middle East. I think everybody should be aware of that. But the reason we engaged with it uh, and put forward a proposition was because there is an election coming and at that election people have got a right to say where do you stand on these issues and where we stand on the issue was set out in the resolution last night which at the end of all the bickering and all the shouting and all the unedifying scenes is the only thing that was passed last night by the House of Commons. Before that you've got a by-election. Which way should people who would normally vote Labour vote in Rochdale? Well, I you know, I deeply regret that there's no Labour candidate. And when there's no Labour candidate, uh, people will have to make their own judgment. You know that I've asked two of the others of your colleagues, because you're very well briefed when you come, you know they've both said that they would probably spoil their ballot papers. What would you do? Well, I don't live there. Um, no, you so don't, it's but not if you my did. Decision. Um, but they may be looking to you. Um, they might. And, uh, uh, you know, I know you're going to ask me this four or five times, but. Uh, People in Rochdale will have to make their own decision. I do so regret it. Uh, well, look, it's an unprecedented thing. I, I've been around politics for quite a long time. Me too. And I cannot remember a situation, I don't know if you can, where a political party has withdrawn uh, support from a candidate after the nomination had exactly. closed so they couldn't be replaced. And we did that for a simple reason, which is... I understand why. Um, what I'm asking said, you, yeah, we know, we know, we've talked about it a know, lot, but the good the people of Rochdale are looking for guidance from elder statesmen like you. What are you going to say well, to them? Well, I don't know if they're looking for guidance from me. My uh, advice to them is look carefully at the ballot paper. It's a democracy. Make your decision. So you, if, even if they voted for what looks to appear to be a Labour candidate on the paper? Well, he's still on the ballot paper. I know. Uh, because... Should they still vote for the, the news about what he said came out after the nominations had closed, but it's up to them how they vote. Should they vote for him? Look, when there's no Labour candidate, I can't well, give there them There sort of is a Labour candidate, isn't there, because it says Labour next to his name. Well, we were in this situation where we had to take this unprecedented decision to withdraw support because of what he said. And the fact that we did that shows that we're serious when we say that the Labour Party's changed. It's not just words. It's taken... A decision like that, which was a big... It took you long enough to make that decision. decision. ..to take. Uh, I think we did it pretty quickly. OK. We know that you didn't. Well, I think 48 hours, when we didn't know the second piece of information uh, at the beginning of this, is quite quick decision-making. OK, let's see what happens with that uh, by-election. I think we can be... One thing we can say is Labour's not going to win it. And sadly, that is the case. Um, but in the choice... Uh, of have you really changed your party? Can you put up with comments like that? We said we have changed the party and we can't put up with comments like that and that's why we had to take that decision to withdraw support. Always great to see you. Thanks very much indeed. Thanks a lot. Much appreciated.